But God led the people around by the way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. And the people of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt equipped for battle. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For Joseph had made the sons of Israel solemnly swear, saying, God will surely visit you and you shall carry up my bones with you from here. And they moved on from Succoth and encamped at Ethan on the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, that they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before the people. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 8, beginning to read at verse 12. I am the light of the world. Again Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So the Pharisees said to him, you are bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered, even if I do bear witness about myself, my testimony is true, for I know where I came from and where I am going, but you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one, yet even if I do judge, my judgment is true, for it is not I alone who judge, but I and the Father who sent me. In your law it is written that the testimony of two people is true. I am the one who bears witness about myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness about me. They said to him, therefore, where is your Father? Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. These words he spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, but no one arrested him because his hour had not yet come. This is the word of the Lord. What is the biggest light you've ever seen? Don't just think of the sun. What is the biggest light you've ever seen? Okay, the brightest, oh, it's magically changed, the brightest light. Would anyone like to volunteer the brightest light they've ever seen, maybe apart from the sun, because it obviously is the sun. So, go on, Jerome. A lighthouse. Any lighthouse in particular, Jerome? No. They're light, they're, in, they're bright though, aren't they? Intentionally bright. There's, I've got some information about Lighthouse, which I'll throw up, well, I'll throw up in a minute. Um, okay, anything else? Florence? Bonfire? How, why did you say bonfire? Is it because you saw one last night? Yeah, <laughs> bonfire now, yeah. Yeah. Stars? That's quite good, isn't it? Because they're really far away. So obviously, to, for them to travel so, the light to travel so many light years have to be pretty bright. Yeah. Bob? Man, you know, I have floodlights. Yeah, shining on darkness, Bob. <laughs> and despair. Yeah. <laughs> would, you, would anyone like to know what the brightest man made light is? Yes. Okay. I think we might have a picture of it. <gasps> now, that, this is a light um, from Las Vegas. Now, that, that behind it is the sun, which makes it look brighter than it is, but it shines up. It's called the Luxor Sky Beam. Okay. Luxor Sky Beam produces around 42 billion lumens 
You ever look at lumens when you're trying to figure out what light do I need? I need so many lumens. An average light bulb is 800 lumens. So 42 billion. That, that means it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine zeros after it. Lumens, 42 and nine zeros lumens. That is really bright. Um, for context, um, the Eiffel Tower has, if, I don't know if everyone's seen the beacon from the Eiffel Tower, which you can see from a long way away, about quite a long way away, often up to 50 miles sometimes. That has two million lumens. That's quite a lot of lumens. That's quite a lot of lumens, I'd say. Um, a lighthouse, a lighthouse, see if it's got any lumens. Fi average is about 500,000 lumens. But you can see a lighthouse from up to about 15 or 20 nautical miles, which isn't the same as real miles, 17 to 23 miles, or if you're so inclined, 28 to 37 kilometers. That's how far you can see, how far 500,000 lumens gets you. But the light of all, the sun, remember, the Lux sky beam was 42 billion lumens. The sun is 3.5 octillion lumens, which would mean you'd need 3.5 and then 28 zeros after it to, to be able to write the number. That's how bright the sun is, which is when you look at the sun, your eyes go ah, straight away because it's far too bright. Lights, the brightest lights you've ever seen. Now, the reason we're talking about lights um, is because Jesus said something about light in the midst of a, a very famous festival um, called the Festival of Booths or the Festival of Tabernacles, which if we translate it into Festival of Tents, we might say in modern day worlds. Essentially, it was a festival in which everybody who lived in Jerusalem, they would all come. And even though many of them had nice houses with comfy beds, and they had lovely, well, probably didn't have sofas, but seats they could sit at and things they can hang out of. They weren't allowed to sleep or sit or live in their houses for a whole week. They had to, often they had flat roofs, you know, like a flat garage roof. They, they had to go on top of their roofs and they had to make basically a temporary shelter, which had three sides, which looked, which was, I guess the equivalent would be like a sun tent. So they had to make a sun tent, and the, obviously they'd be a bit bigger than this one, but they, for a whole week, they had to spend their time sitting or sleeping or living and cooking and hanging around, not in their home, but in their shelter. Why would you do that? I know, I know some people really like camping, but normally the best thing about camping is that you can get away, far away from home, and like be in the wilderness and the wild and relax with the nice sounds of nature. Not next to all of the things you could have at home, but just be on the roof. The reason they had to do it is because it was a festival that reminded them of what God did for them. That God led them from Egypt to the promised land bit by bit. And they would walk a bit for one day, then they would camp again with a better tent than this, I'm sure. Walk a bit one day, then camp again. Walk a bit for one day and camp again. And God led them through the wilderness and they followed him and followed him and followed him until they got to the promised land. Now, there's one very special, exciting thing. Uh, with a special evening. We're pretty sure it happened on the last evening of the entire festival where they all celebrated something incredible. What they did is they, they would have these um, in, the, in the women's court of the temple, which was the, like their big, 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 big church where they worshipped, is they had these four things called candelabras. And these four things were like huge like sticks that went 75 feet high all the way up the sides of this building. And they had lots of different slots for kind of huge candles that were lit by oil to go on. They went all the way up the sides, all the way up the sides, all the way up the sides. There were four of them, and they lit them all on one evening. And on that evening, there was so much light 
and so much heat and light, um, and they would, they would lit, seriously, the, the priests would run around, basically, with ladders, re- refilling them up all the time, because there were so many flames all around, and it would light up the whole of the temple area, and people said you could, everybody's house was lit up by this, these four huge kind of towers of light that were at the center of the temple. And people danced and celebrated all evening, remembering that God led people in their tents in the wilderness. He led people bit by bit by bit, and he led them by this huge light that lit their way in the darkness and led them in the day. In the middle of all of that happening, Jesus stood up, it says, And said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He was saying, you know how God led you, like with the pillar of fire that's so bright? You know how you're remembering him? I am the one that will not just lead you, but will lead the entire world to life. The entire world to life. And there were some people there who questioned him straight away. The Pharisee said to him, you're bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. And then Jesus went on to explain stuff which can get a bit confusing. But underneath it all is this principle. The thing is, how do you testify to somebody who is saying they are the light of the world? What evidence do you need to prove that somebody is light of the, the light of the world? Well, I mean, last night we went to the bonfire up at the, in Booth, near Booth Hall, the Scout bonfire. And the very, we arrived and the the bonfire was being lit. (laughs) And the very, by the time we'd arrived next to the bonfire, it was huge. It was like 20, 25, 30 feet tall. It was, it was hot. You could feel the heat off it. But the most significant thing is that if you turn, if you looked at the bonfire, it's really bright. If you turn around, you can see that the whole of the field behind has been lit up by this bonfire. What evidence would you need to prove that the bonfire was really bright? What evidence do you need to prove that the sun is really bright, that it is like a great light? Well, the thing is, it's a bit of a funny thing to be kind of asking, isn't it? If the sun is so bright, you don't need much evidence. You just need to see the sun and to feel its warmth. That, that is evidence in itself. You just need to see the fire. And so Jesus is standing, having done all that he does, all the miracles he does, speaking with all the authority he does. He's standing before all these people, and he says, I am the light of the world, and they're standing before him. He can't be any more evidence than he already is. He is God standing before them, doing miracles and doing all sorts of things, yet still they don't believe him. Why don't they believe him? Why don't people today believe him? Well, the problem has to do with the fact that darkness doesn't like light. Um, We've got another, que- got another question to ask in a moment. Uh, Johnny will find that. Um, uh, the, other, uh, the other night, it was, you may not have escaped your notice that on Thursday night of the 31st of October, it was Halloween, and um, we did our light path for the second year where to try to be a bit of light in the darkness, we kind of invited people up a, a path that had pumpkins that didn't terrify you but said things like joy and hope and peace, and, and then we gave out some, um, some sweets with some little cards and lots, lots of hot chocolates, 500 bags of sweets, a thousand hot chocolates were handed over, loads of people really appreciative, um, 
Halloween. The thing with Halloween, though, is it, it relies on something, doesn't it? It relies on the darkness. And so I want you to turn in your groups uh, to ask this next question. What would Halloween be like in full light? Bla I'm talking blazing, blue sky, sunny day in June. What would it be like? Why? Would it work? Why? What, what would it be like in full light? Blazing sunshine. You'd need watermelons. Carve the watermelons, do you think? Anything else other than... What would it be like? Would it work? Not scary. Not scary? Why wouldn't it be scary, Isabel? Yeah, there, there, yeah, yeah. There'd be no darkness. Be no dark. There'd be light. It'd be like a fancy dress pie. Be no darkness. Why do you need darkness for Halloween stuff to work? Why? why? Does anyone want to have a stab? Go on, Jerome. Go on. Fear needs darkness. Take it. To remind us it exists, the relationship between darkness and fear. Ella, you had something good, didn't you? What did you say? Darkness is scary. Anyone else think darkness is scary? I do sometimes. Real darkness, oh, we can't actually see anything. It's quite terrifying. But, Scary things are kind of made for the dark, aren't they? It's something about them. They just fit together, hand in glove. Scary and dark. And the weird thing about Halloween is the way that spiritually dark things, like demons, witches, horrible stuff that people dress up in, I'm not sure people, most people understand what they're doing when they do it, links, links somehow it just fits to, with... Physical darkness. So as soon as the lights go back, as soon as it's dark, around about five o'clock, now it's time for Halloween. So physical darkness leads to, links to spiritual darkness. But the same thing works in reverse. Have you noticed that whenever you've read through the Bible, you find lots of references to light which are associated with God. Light links to spiritual light. In the origin story, at the very beginning of the Bible story, God said there's darkness hovering over the face of the deep, very dark. And God says, the very first thing he says, let there be light. And boof, there's a good creation that God has made. Our kingdoms are talked about like darkness. God's kingdom is a kingdom of light. The kingdom against God is a kingdom of darkness. And the thing is, we intuitively understand it because we're wired to be beings who are put in God's world where there is light and there is darkness. And we need, we need, we need, we need light. We don't really need darkness, not in the same way. Because even when it's dark, we find ways to fill darkness with light, don't we? Before electricity, it was trickier. Lots of candles, lots of big candelabra things if you want to light up a big space. But now we just flick a switch and boom, lights are on. Use more power, but we've got light in our rooms. We've got in our bedroom, we'll have night lights here or there. There'll be little flickers. We, we leave a light on in the landing every night, so it's never fully dark in our house. Because dark is scary. We need the light. We don't need darkness. And I think it's the same on a spiritual level. We need the light. We don't need darkness. We need God because he's made us. We don't need things that are against God 
and are pushing against him. However, and this is, remember, going back to why did those people standing before Jesus who said, I'm the light of the world, why did those people not believe in him? Why did they dislike him or flee from him or, or try and kill him, actually, in the end? Why do people not like Jesus now? Well, there's, the problem is, it is because of something in us. Now, I've got, um, I'm going to talk about two sorts of animals now. In here, I've, I, um, I've got some animals which are still alive. They're kind of animals. They're more insects. Would anyone like to come and find someone, have a look and see what sorts of insects I've got? I'm going to the, you notice the children are in the wings, so I'm going to the wings. Can you, oh, it's quite dark over here, so you need light. Can you see anything I've got in here? Uh, centipedes. centipedes. <laughs> anything else? Yeah, a bit further back. Barney, Barney. Now, there are centipedes, but there's something else in here. It's quite hard to see. Has anyone got a light on their phone? You see the centipede flying around. What else? Oh, come on. Keep looking. Oh, there it is. Woodlouse. Everyone's favorite. Anyone else I would like to have a look? No? Not really? I'll, um, I'll leave them over here. You can look after the man. There you go. You just put the lid on. That's fine. I went, went looking out. Oh, there he is. I went looking outside for some of these animals. And it won't surprise you to, to know that I didn't find them just there. I didn't walk straight out and say, oh, look, there's a woodlouse in the middle of the light on the floor. Oh, look, there's a lovely centipede just crawling around my feet. Happy, happy, happy. I had to go looking for them. And you know where I went looking for them? I had to find a damp, dark place where there were worms and spiders and wood lice and centipedes. Because wood lice are made, they love damp and they love dark and they'll move towards damp and dark. If you put a light on them, they'll, they will neg they've got negative phototaxis. They'll move away from the light. However, there are some animals that love the light. I've got a picture of one of them next. There's lots of this. You may not know this. But sea lions absolutely love the sun. Apparently in the coast of California, never been. There's just huge numbers of them in various places. And they wrestle each other for the best spot, like German tourists, <laughs> the best spot for the sun. Oh. Put, their, put their towels down at 5 a.m. And they'll lie in the sun all day if they can. And they'll go into the sea to get some food. And they'll come back and they'll just lie in the sun. They love light. They move towards the light. If they could get closer, they would. There are different types of animals. Now, there's a spiritual meaning to this. Because in our hearts, there is woodlouse and sea lion at the same time. We both need God, we want light, but we prefer darkness. If you're, not, if you're not a Christian, you will like darkness more than light. And so if Jesus were to present himself in that big pit, like I am the light of the world, like he did these people, you would be like a woodlouse and you would run away in your heart and you would say, I don't want anything to do with you, Jesus. I might even try and kill you. And we find that, don't we? When you mention Jesus or talking about him, people in, sometimes instinctively, Ugh! it's because people have dark hearts. They want to live away from God without him, even though we're in God's world and he created light and everything good and, and we need God and his justice and his goodness and his kindness and, his, and the idea of mercy and equality. We need all of those things for society to work well, but we don't want God. And so we'll run away with him and steal as many things as we can. We'll be like a woodlouse. And which is why Jesus came to the world to be this light of the world, but not so he would shine in front of people. He would show what he's really like and die on the cross for us. And then he would send his spirit into our hearts. 
to bring light there. And that's what the Christian is. He's someone who's received God's Spirit and has given them a liking for the light. So that when Jesus says, I am the light of the world, we go, yes. And he says, whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We go, I want to follow you. And we take his word seriously. And we listen to him. And we try and follow him, trusting in him. And we receive forgiveness and grace and mercy. And the Christian life then is one of walking, following the light, remembering that there, even though this darkness bubbles up and we've got sinful bodies and we live in a sinful world, we have this spirit that enables us to follow the light and dispel darkness. Because we have been made sea lions, not wood lice. Now, I don't know where you are in your Christian life. You might be struggling a bit. Darkness is upon you. Well, pray and ask for God's spirit to help you Push that darkness aside afresh. Fill your mind with his words, which are powerful to help you do that. You may actually not think, don't think, I'm not sure I follow Jesus yet. Remember, he's the light of the world. It's a free gift to anyone. If you want to follow him, it's tough to follow him, but you have his spirit that helps you to follow his light. You may be finding the Christian life hard. That's because pushing back darkness is hard, even with God's strength. Keep on going, because darkness and light lead two ways. One just gets darker and darker and eventually drops off into a chasm of darkness. The other only gets brighter and will be with God forever. So be encouraged. Whichever place you're in, just remember, we've been made sea lions. (laughs) Trust in the Lord to give you strength that you can keep following in his light. I'm going to pray, and then um, then I'm going to invite um, Jeff to come and lead us in more prayers. Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, thank you that Jesus was the light of the world. We recognize that there is darkness, and without your help, our hearts would be full of darkness, and we'd run away from him. Lord, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Shine it afresh in our hearts again. Help us to trust and follow the Lord Jesus. Take his counsel and guidance and wisdom on board. And would he be our Lord and Savior? And would you give us courage to keep on following him, dispelling the darkness in our hearts, that we might continue to be children of light? We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.